Hello everyone, my name is Mike and welcome to the third tutorial in the Puppeteer tutorial series. In this video, what we will be doing is talking about how to use the Amazon navigation to grab all the products from each page and then store them locally to a CSV file. So a CSV file is a file that you can open in Excel. So let's see how the navigation works exactly. So right here we are on the Amazon in an Amazon category page and we see multiple products but if I scroll down here you can see we have a navigation which has multiple pages and we can see it packs out to around 400 products but obviously that's not the same for every category other categories can have only 30 pages other can have 20 pages so we need to think dynamically so for this one, we know it maxes out at 400. So let me show you something. Right here on the link, I can go directly to the page 400. And as you will see, what we can say the script to do is, let's say we are on 399, to click next, okay? So if I inspect element, okay, we're down here. As you will see, we have a button with a class that says a last. So we can tell the script, okay, click a last until you cannot anymore. But how can we figure out if we can or if we cannot? So if I click one more time next and we go to the last page, as you'll see right here, we don't have that gray box around it. And we also have another class that is a disabled. So it doesn't only have the a last, but it has the a disabled as well. Now, what we can do is grab this element by the class name a last and check if it has a disabled class as well. So Let's go on code and let me show you how it works. So what I did right now is created a new file called class.js and I want to make a separate file temporarily so we can test a few things out. First of all, I wanna go ahead and go to the Amazon page, copy the URL that has the last page. So next is disabled and paste it here and when I, I want to try a few things out and see which one works for me so okay i found this code right here so let's try it and also make a few changes so we can make it work for us in our case okay so first of all we will add an option called or wait until network idle 2 actually all we can do is load okay so we want to wait until the page is loaded and then run this because if we run it too soon it will get nothing okay because the the, the page hasn't loaded yet okay so let's make sure changes so first of all we don't have a button but we can give it a class so let me inspect okay so I'll copy this so first of all let's try by this one okay so this one should say disabled but that doesn't mean it's disabled it only means that this class exists okay so it was able to find it so let's do console the log is disabled but that only says that this button exists so let's try that out first okay first of all let me do headless false because we want to be able to see what's going on all right so it says true okay 
so it exists now let's try to add this one so now it will tell us if that button is disabled because that what class it takes so let's try it and this will say true as well it says false okay so we did something wrong i believe we have to put them side by side but let's try one more thing so we can do copy copy selector and i'm gonna copy those last elements because everything in front of it is not dynamic okay so it's best to do it that way okay so let's try this one boom we got true so that's great now let's take this actually just this and add it to our previous script so let's go here and now what we want to do is tell the script to click next grab the products append them to an array and click next next and next until it reaches is disabled true so let's do something here so for every product we want to do that so let's say while true but the true has to be something we can change so we can say if it is disabled or not so let's do let is button disabled and let's do false so if it's not disabled then do the the below so let's put actually just just go to the bottom so right here format it great now we say if it's disabled just go if it's not disabled just go ahead and get the products now we want to add another thing and that's to go to the next page so we will tell it to click to this button right here so let's do await page dot click to click the button and give it a class name and let's copy this one but just with the disabled not there it's we want just that and we have to do another thing and that's to check if it is disabled so i'll copy this and let's do this so first of all let's update the value and now we, what we have to do is if is disabled actually we have to do if it's not disabled so let's do that and put it inside so actually that's basically it but let's test it out first of all let's find a category with less pages because we don't want to sit here for a while okay that was fast so let's copy this one and uh, from this one we start from the page number one and it has all the way to the page number three so let's take that And now we have to run index instead and let's see how it goes so i got number two and it stopped so we got an error no node found for selector li a last and what we can do okay so before it clicks it well, what we can do is wait page dot wait for selector And what this does is it awaits until the selector is shown on the HTML code of the page. So we, we say wait until the button is there, then go below. Of course that has a timeout, so it waits for about 30 seconds by default. If it's not there for 30 seconds, it will show an error. 
but it should be visible within the 30 seconds so we are okay but let's add one more thing and that's to say visible to true and what that does is it waits for the selector until it's visible to the page so it might be visible to the code but it might have a class that, that it doesn't show the button right here but this one it will so let's try it so let's run it okay it worked give me a second we have a product handle for every product we might have to put it outside yep that's right we have to put it outside what we had done there is for every product it got we were doing that so it only got one product per page that's wrong so let's put down functionality outside of the for loop so let's just drag it outside format the document because as you'll see right here actually it got well it didn't got all of them it got some of them okay so format document and also let's console the log the length of the items to make sure we get like how many products per page let's check that's one two three four five six so 24 times two and then plus one for the last page so it should be 49 so let's check it let's run it again let's go back it got 72 why did it do that okay so when when we do page dot click we have to await for navigation so page dot await for navigation so we have to wait for the page to change before we do the for loop again actually no okay so that's i found out why so we have to put this one right here so that's one more thing we have to do but we have to wait for navigation as well because we want the updated products so let's try that now so if I run it again what we can do is get up here and do that so wait and do it here Okay, let's try this one. Yep, okay. Let's go. So let's try it. 49. There we go. So we got it. So now what we say is, okay, click it, wait for navigation. But that's not enough so we added another thing and that's wait for selector so wait until the product number one shows up we, it might not have a product number two but always in the last page it will have at least one product and that's product number zero so it starts from zero as you'll see here and that never changed it doesn't go like one five seven it starts from zero so we always have a zero so that's it for navigation we just completed navigation let me delete that because it's unnecessary and now let's go ahead and save them to a csv so let's save the product info to a csv so let's create a csv let's name it results.csv and let's do title price and then image actually we can do anything right here it doesn't mean because we have this name use it here to put it the same here you can put whatever you want here it doesn't matter 
So here's an example I found. First of all, let's put that at the top. With everything else. And now what we are saying here is append to file. And now we're going to put our file results.csv. So we are appending a new line to the CSV. And let's do those. Those string allows us to put JavaScript on it. So we can put dynamic values here. If we put normal strings, that doesn't work. Okay. Probably on every keyboard that will be control one. But it might be different on your keyboard, not sure, but most of the times you can press control one, the number one, and this string should be shown up. So now let's put our values here. So let me do something. So uh, we will delete that. Delete it from here as well. And here on the items that push, instead of doing that, we will append to our file. So let's put the title, then we will put a comma with the price and same for the image. And that's it. So delete that. And we have to delete that. Nope. So it's oh, okay. So I type error. So let's format it. Uh, we don't we don't need the console alert here. Okay, so one thing we have to do is leave space right here. Otherwise, it will start from the line number one. So make sure you leave a space here. And one more thing we have to do is every time it appends, we need to tell it to create a new line. So append and then do that, okay? So to do that, we have to do that and slash n and that creates a new line for us so let's open terminal run it and if we go back there they are so we have the title here we have the price and we have the image url now, I have installed the plugin on VS Code, which I'm able to preview the data. So let me show you which extension that is. That's data preview. So now let me open the CSV file again, click on it. Okay. So we have an error as you'll see here. Um, it doesn't register the new lines. Let me try something. So let me delete all the products right here. And now it says that correctly. So I probably know why that's why we have a problem here. So we might have a tile right here that has a comma. And we tell the, C the data preview to separate separate the values so title this one and the price it will separate it it will know which one is the price by the comma but when you have a title here that has a comma and again a title and then again title and then again a price it expects to only have three values from the first one right here we get it an example and we tell it Okay, all of them have only three prices, three values, sorry. So to fix that, we just have to replace the commas with something else. So let's go here, say replace. Do, okay, doesn't let me do that. There you go. Okay, so we have to put our regex. So do the same as me. Now we have to replace all commas. That's what the G means. G means replace all and whatever 
we have on the slices so the comma and replace it with let's do dot let's do a dot okay so let me delete everything put a new line and run again okay let's go back let's try to preview the data and there we go so let's say now the last thing we have to do is to make sure we close the browser so that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope it helped out i'll come with a few more ideas to add to this script like how to make it faster using multi-threading I might do that, let me know down in the comments if you want to see that. And also let me know down in the comments if you want to see anything else. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss any of my future episodes of this tutorial of my or of my future videos. And see you in the next video.